Hi, this is 6.5 Media on the road. We're at Mobile World Congress Barcelona 2025, and I'm speaking with Anand Oswald with Palo Alto Networks. Anand, how's it going? I'm doing wonderful. How are you, sir? Good. How's the show been for you so far? Just busy so far. Very yeah. busy. Awesome. Well, big announcement today, uh, Prisma 5G SASE, yeah. right? And I want to talk a little bit about that. Um, I want to start with Precision AI. I mean, a lot of companies are re trying to redefine modern AI. You have something called Precision AI, yes. which involves uh, co-pilots yes. to facilitate uh, ease of management and yes. reduce friction, uh, as well as uh, AI secure by design features. So yes. let's talk a little bit about that. Okay. So if you think about AI, you think of it in two different aspects. How do you use AI for security? Right. And how do you secure the use of AI? Yeah. It's so, a classic. Yeah. Battle, right? So the the, <laughs> so the 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 precision AI is about the first part. How we're using AI to give better security for our customers. Mm -hmm. And if you think about the evolution of of security, if you think about five or six years ago, almost everybody, and some of them are even today, the way they did security is on the basis on the constructs of signatures and databases. Mm -hmm. So if you take a simple simple example, like say, phishing or URL filtering. The way it was done was that you crawl the internet, you build a database of every URL in the world. You group them into, into categories, news websites, adult content, websites of country X, and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. And you said policies. The issue we saw more than five years ago was that the efficacy of these solutions was dropping. Because attackers are getting more and more sophisticated. Mm -hmm. you, if URLs come up and down in seconds, I don't have time to build a database. Right. So what we said is that the classical way of database and signatures are good, but not good enough. Sure. We have to look at things in line, in real time, look at the metadata, to be able to prevent these threats. Mm -hmm. And that's where we evolved to deep learning models five years ago mm -hmm. across each and every service that we had. In the last two years, we've infused that with all the things with Gen AI. Now, of course, you can't use Gen AI for security because as you know, it hallucinates. It's not always accurate. In cybersecurity, it have to be accurate. Mm -hmm. So precision AI is really the combination of what we use for a decade called machine learning, mm -hmm. what we've done in the last four or five years with deep learning, infusing all the variability with Gen AI, and that is precision AI. With Precision AI today, we are able to stop every day 30.8 billion attacks. That's amazing. Right? <laughs> now, a small number of that, roughly 9 million, are net new, which means that attacks that nobody has ever seen before. Mm -hmm. And the reason we're able to stop it, because of these 4,500 plus deep learning models that we have in Precision AI. Okay. The second aspect of the question was that securing AI by design. Right. Now, that also has two parts. One is employees using AI, Gen AI everybody's using a Gen AI applications. We did a survey which said that 60% of employees use these applications. Mm -hmm. Whether you like it, you don't like it, you allow them, you don't allow them, they're going to use it. They're going to get productive, they want to be more efficient, they want to get things done. The problem is that IT has no visibility into what it's they're a using. Classic shadow IT. Ex shadow Challenge. AI. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Uh, they have no control. What do I allow, deny, or do I block? They don't have control over data protection. Mm -hmm. Like if I if I by mistake enter code to tune, fine tune. Many of these are not malicious. Right. Are just like I don't know. I'm I'm entering sensitive data. And so I won't have data protection. Mm -hmm. And the last and the most important one, which people forget is that threat protection, because all of these applications, they give responses back. Guess what? The responses have links. Sure. The responses can have malware. So we want to give visibility, control, data protection, and threat protection. That's for the employee use. Mm -hmm. The second part of AI by design securely is every organization I talk to is building an AI pod application for their end customer to transform their business operations to be more efficient, to get a better experience. Mm -hmm. Now, guess what? It's uh, building an AI pod application is not just taking an existing application, taking a model, and you're done. Right, you've you're, got prompts, you've got a yes, whole host of other Exactly, right? and you're bringing in an entire infrastructure of AI, data sets, tools, plugins, mm -hmm. all of these talk to each other. Sure. But guess what? They also talk to the outside world. Yeah. They also have access to your sensitive data. So how do you make sure that you're securing your applications, your data, and your models? And that's what we call AI runtime security. Mm -hmm. And these two together is securing AI by design. It's super powerful, but you know, monetization is another challenge for service providers as well. I mean, billions of euros, billions of dollars are spent on deploying infrastructure on license spectrum, and it's hard to monetize all that. So what I really like about this solution as well is you're providing a monetization opportunity. So can you talk a little bit about that? Yes, uh, you hit it right. Uh, service providers and telcos have, are spending a lot of money on building 5G inf uh, capable infrastructure. Mm -hmm. Now they want to monetize it, yeah. right? Um, and we are providing them various mechanisms how they can do it. 
First, allowing them to give value-added service to, the, to their 5G consumers, having secure uh, connectivity. Second, giving enterprises 5G a, a slice as a service. So they not only do they have security, but then they have guaranteed uh, quality of service and mm -hmm. constructs of that sort. And last, which I'm most excited about is what we launched today, Prisma SASE, allowing um, service providers to offer enterprise customers. They don't need to change their endpoint, which are SIM based. Mm -hmm. They don't need to change the uh, infrastructure they have. They use the same constructs, SIM based authentication, mm -hmm. going to the packet core, but now they're able to give those devices the same security services that they have on the wireline or the Wi-Fi network. The consistency is incredible. The consistency is very and it's important. zero friction as yes, well, right? Yes, because at the end of the day, you want to have any user on any device over any network. Mm -hmm. The same security services, the same security treatment. That is really the construct of zero trust. You can't right. have it inconsistent, else you're disjointed. Right, right. You know, I really love the ecosystem approach that you're employing as well. And so last week you announced a, a partnership with NTT Data. I actually published a Forbes article and I spoke to the integration that, that's occurring there. But you're also working with like stalwarts like Nokia, NVIDIA. You're working with mobile network operators. Can you spend a little bit of time in, in what, what are your goals there in, in, in kind of doing all that integration work? Uh, the goal is simple. We are seeing a surge in private 5G deployments. This is happening in. It's finally happening, it's, right? It's, it's finally been happening. Very long time. Yes, it's and hap it's happening in areas which are, I would say, the slowest to move. Typically, sure. Critical infrastructure, utilities, oil and gas, yeah. mining, Hi manufacturing, like highly regulated, industries. highly regulated, public safety environments, and so we want to make it easier for these organizations, this infrastructure, to adopt a complete private 5G securely. Mm -hmm. And for that, it's very important that we have the right partnerships partnerships with the radio vendors, whether it's Nokia or a bunch of startups in the private 5G space. And we have Salona, Ataya, Druid, and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. But also partners with system integrators, with different kinds of people who are building private 5G networks. Mm -hmm. So the customers will have a very seamless experience in how they can deploy it. Mm -hmm. Because at the end of the day, we want to make sure that they are having, they're thinking about security from the get-go, building secure private 5G networks, having granular policy controls based on the IMSI, the IMEI, or any other construct that they want. So it's very simple to deploy and easy for them to, to replicate what they build in one uh, infrastructure, one factory flow, and take it to the, to the others. Sure. I mean, and the, the scalability of that is phenomenal, right? Yes. And you're not, you know, you're leveraging best practices with partners. And ultimately, at the end of the day, you're providing more flexibility yes. to meet customers and partners where they're at as 100%. well, right? Yes. Well, hey, it's been a great conversation, my friend. So good to see you. But as we close, you touched on zero trust. And if you could spend just a little bit of time on, on why it's so important. I mean, so many security vendors out there are claiming zero trust. From my perspective, there aren't a lot of complete end-to-end -end solutions. I think Palo Alto Networks is unique in that it does provide an end-to-end -end solution. But yeah. talk to the importance of zero trust so, and how you're approaching it differently. Let me tell you the first thing. Zero trust is the most abused word in cybersecurity. It's so bad. It's almost like yeah. AI. <laughs> so, so if you ask five people what is zero trust, you get eight answers. Right. right? The way we think about zero trust simplistically is no notion of implied trust, right? right? Least so privilege access. Least privilege access. So think about it. I'm in the office. I use my badge. I walk into the office with my managed laptop. I get no different treatment from a security perspective as I'm home on my unmanaged device, my personal laptop, my phone. I have consistent security policies no matter where I am. I have consistent policy no matter what device I'm using. Managed, unmanaged. Mm -hmm. I, have, I have this uh, consistent security policy if I'm on the corporate Wi-Fi or the 5G network, or the Wi-Fi, or the satellite in the in the plane. Mm -hmm. the, the data can be anywhere. The application can be anywhere. I call it the any any factor. Mm -hmm. Any user on any device on any network accessing any application and any data. Triple A. You, you, you want to make sure that yeah, it's consistently secured. Right. You have the least privileged access constructs you talked about, and you are able to manage them through single pane of glass. So, like if you think of the solution I talked about, Prisma SASE 5G. Right. That you're also going to go on home and access on Wi-Fi. Yep. You want to be able to have the same policy, the same notions of what you're doing, and manage it consistently. Mm -hmm. And that's really what we're driving to zero trust right. across the enterprise. Yeah. At the end of the day, that consistency with policy management eliminates security gaps, right? I mean, that's often what happens when you know, like attackers are able to move laterally through almost, a network. Almost every single breach, if you do a postmortem, right. guess what do you hear from from that report that was there? 
if you did A, B, and C, mm -hmm. you could have avoided it. Right. Which begs the question, why didn't we do A, B, and C? Right. Because it's hard. You're using 30 different tools, 30 different point products, yes. you have 30 different consoles, you're not having, um, and then what happens is that most organizations will then just resort to the least common denominator of policies. Sure. Because it's hard and complicated. So we would really want to use the whole construct of zero trust and platformization to simplify and unify network security. Reduce all the operational complexity. Simplify the operations. Reduce the ROI. And yes, you're gonna save money. But guess what? The most important goal is you're gonna get a more superior security outcome. Sure. And that is the goal of platformization. Yeah, for sure. And you've executed quite well on that over the years as well. But I think, you know, if I were to summarize, you know, Prisma, SASE 5G, um, it's protecting mobile networks. Um, these networks are massive, you know, millions of users, the attack surface is huge. So that's definitely a benefit. But at the end of the day, you're also providing a new monetization opportunity for service providers as well. So that's like, that's a win-win. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And also if they get consistency across wired, wireline, Wi-Fi, same policy constructs and simplified operations. Yeah, it's the AAA. There you go. Um, this has been a great conversation. This is 6.5 Media on the road at Mobile World Congress Barcelona. Uh, it's been a great conversation and I encourage you to tune into the other videos that we'll be recording this week at the event. Thank <laughs> you.